Hi everyone, my name is Fernanda and in today's First Chapter Fridays, we're going to be reading a book that's called Barely Floating. And this book was written by Liam Rivera. Let's dive in. Chapter 1. It's 10.30 in the morning and Roosevelt Pool is packed with people. Big kids, skinny kids, babies shrieking because of the cold water, while their mommies try soothing them with sweet baby talk. Rough kids dunking each other, girls in long t-shirts hiding their panzas, abuelita sitting on the pool steps, cooling off their wrinkly legs. Then there's me. I'm at the far end of the pool, the deep end. That's where the real action is. I'm about to take Beto down. He doesn't know this, of course. Just look at his clueless face staring out at nothing. Beto is all cheeks, like a chipmunk storing food, or like Kiko from El Chavo. I'm about to deflate those cachetes with pure muscle. What does El Chavo always say? Beto doesn't count on my astucias. Hey, Beto, I bet you 10 bucks you can't beat me in a race across the length of the pool. My voice is loud enough so that everyone can hear. So Beto turns to his group of friends and shakes his head. Dude, your sister, he says to Ramon. He laughs off my challenge. That's not playing, Ramon says. She means business. There are three boys in my family. Ramon is the youngest. Julio, the oldest, is married with a kid on the way. And Raimundo is attending college in Santa Barbara. Ramon is in high school and so is his ugly friend Beto. Beto is on the water polo team. I'm not on any team. I'm just here to make money. 10 bucks says he can't beat me. I lean back against the pool deck. Those around me chuckle or shake their heads. Why can't you just chill for once, Sheila says. Sheila is my cousin. Technically, Sheila and Ramon are supposed to be taking care of me. Taking care. However, is forever in air quotes. It's hard to contain a person like me, especially when that person grew up in a house full of skinny, loud boys. Sheila doesn't get it. She's an only child who loves clothes and Fenty lipstick. Me and you swimming across the pool, I repeat. You know how to swim, right? Last week, I made even 20 bucks out swimming twins. The twins were running their mouths about how there was no way a gorda could swim the full length of a pool. There's always someone underestimating me. They see my stomach rolls and think she can't possibly be fit enough. When I emerged victorious, the twins had no choice but to pay. Beto looks nervous. If he doesn't take the bet, he's a punk. If Beto agrees to race me and I end up beating him, which I will, what does that make him? So much is weighing on those balloony cheeks. From here to the other end of the pool, I say, come on, what are you afraid of? The crowd around us grows. I look over at my best friend, Joanne, who sits in our, shaped, in our shaded pool, pool, in our shaded spot, reading Summer Hero, volume two of our manga series, Kurahashi. I haven't had a chance to read that one yet. I always get the manga after Joanne finishes, and then we dissect every little detail in the story. Joanne shields her eyes now, and gives me a timid wave. Fine, but I'm only doing this to teach you a lesson, Beto finally says. Teach me a lesson? Even Ramon laughs at this statement. Beto hasn't been around my house much, nor around me. He doesn't understand what, he doesn't understand that I'm like a shark, relentless. When I was seven, I sold chicles to the kids in my class until another man told my mom. At 10 years ago, I found a way to teach kids curse words in different languages, a dollar, a curse word. That lasted for a couple of weeks. 
Now that I'm 12, I understand the importance of using my skills. I'm fast. I can be anyone in this pool if I set my mind to it. Sheila tries to be the timer. No way. I don't trust her. Besides, it's not good. It's not a good look for family to be involved in business. Instead, I hand the honors to a boy with saggy curly curls covering most of his face. He parts his hair away from his big eyes. Good. He'll do. On your mark, shaggy boy says. Kids slap my shoulders, girls giggle. Some of them think I'm cool to do this. Others think I'm too much. I'm not doing this to please anyone. I'm doing it because I can beat Bethel. I pull down my goggles, get set. One more glance at Bethel, he's laughing. He thinks this is a joke. I'm going to win. Go! I propel my legs against the wall and shoot like a rocket. The start is the most important part of any race. I glide underwater for as long as I can until I have to break the surface for air. Professional swimmers always do that. One quick gulp of air and I turn to Bethel. He's ahead, but not by much. Okay, time to catch up. My arms are like octopus tentacles, stretching as far as they can. I swoop water and direct it behind me. I kick my legs hard. Every stroke is important. In this pool, I'm a swordfish. I'm a mermaid. I'm an underwater speed demon. And this demon is about to take Bethel down. Too bad, so sad. A quick look, Bethel is slowing down. He's about to get beat by this 12 year old. Where has his training from water polo gone? He finally notices me. We are neck to neck. I bet anything there's fear in Bethel's eyes. I dig deep and find the last burst of energy to seal this deal and boom! I tap the end of the pool. Bethel pulls in seconds later. The crowd around me cheers. I, ne I never get tired of this. The part when I'm victorious, when I'm able to prove the haters wrong. Never underestimate the power of a Latina. That's what my mom always says. Dudes are always trying. Poor Beto, he's breathless, practically hyperventilating. I won. I jump out of the water and point to my empty palm. Pay me. No way, Beto says, pushing my hand away. He's barely able to form words. I'm not paying you. Pay me, I beat you. I don't like where this is going. If you lose, you have to be a good sport. Besides, this is business. Everyone here is my witness. I beat you fair and square. Beto tries to brush me off. The crowd eggs him on. They call him weak. How could you let a kid beat you? You'll let a girl win. I don't care if he's in his feelings right now. I won without any tricks. It was just me in the water. You owe me 10 bucks, I say. Give me my money. Beto and my brother walk over to where Sheila and her friends hang out. They try to ignore me. I will not let up. Beto can't negate on this deal. I'm not leaving until I get my payment. I stand in the middle of their group, right on some girls' towels. I'm a terrorist, and we're known for our willingness to get into people's faces. I will not move from this spot until Bethel places some crisp bills on my hand. The girls complain about me standing on their towel. Bethel pleads me to my brother. That's enough, Nat, Ramon says. Now even my own blood is willing to back me up. Honestly, what's the point of having brothers when they won't stand up for what's right? Go play with your friends, he says. No, I say. If Ramon won't help me, then I'll have to get ugly. I jump on Beto. You owe me. Beto doesn't know what to do. He knows well enough not to hit me, but he also doesn't want his eyes scratched out. So there is a whole lot of awkward wrestling going on. Give me my money, I yell. 
Beto is obviously stronger, but like I said, I'm a shark. I won't stop. You have an interesting sister, I overhear a girl say to Ramon. I peel myself off Beto and turn to face the girl. Well, you have an interesting face, I yell. If she wants in on this, I will gladly include her. Before I can jump on her, my brother pushes me away from the group. Go away, Nat. Ramon has mom's face. The series not in the mood for this face. I head to Joanne, who places an arm around my shoulder. I can't believe it, I say. I'm so angry. You can't win them all, Joanne says. She tries her best to protect her manga from getting wet. Of course I can, I say. Mom says if I work hard enough, I can do and be whatever I want. Beating Beto was just a tiny part of today's goals. Besides, if I don't get paid, then everyone else will think they can do the same. Know what I mean? Joanne gives a slight nod. Sure, but there will be other chances to make money, she says. I love Joanne, but honestly, I wish she could see the things from my point of view. Joanne doesn't like confrontation, which is funny because confrontation is basically how we met. It was in first grade at Sagrado Corazon Elementary School. A sweaty boy in our class kept pulling Joanne's hair. The teacher did nothing. Instead, Miss Castro said this weird thing to Joanne. He probably likes you. I couldn't stop thinking how mom says, your body, your permission. So when the boy decided to touch Joanne's hair, I grabbed his hair and wouldn't let go. Mom was. Mom was called in. The incident brought a quick end to my Catholic school days. It was worth it. Joanne eventually ended up in the same middle school as me, and we've been best friends ever since. I'm always ready to defend us no matter what, while Joanne would rather hide behind a book and wait things out. Somehow, the relationship works. We don't need Beto, Joanne says. We have more than enough money. It's true. I'm saving money so we can go to the big anime con on October 30th. For the past two years, Joanne and I have attended and cosplayed our favorite characters because Joanne's parents don't believe in spending money on dumb stuff. I save enough for both of our badges. I want to make sure we can buy cool manga at the con, I say. Beto's going to pay. I just have to figure out how. Oh, here we go. Joanne digs through her tote and pulls out a brown paper bag. She hands the bag to me. Yes, you remembered. I give Joanne a side hug and quickly pull out the last issue of Vogue. Although my fingers are dry, I still wipe them off at the towel, just in case. Manga is really Joanne's scene. I just like the cosplay because I get to wear awesome costumes and makeup, which mom only allows for con. Mom thinks girls don't need to wear makeup to feel empowered. It's the reason why I hide the Vogue and Elle magazines I asked Joanne to buy for me. Mom hates those things. She thinks they add to self-esteem issues and a distorted view of the body. I get what she means, I do. I wish mom could be more understanding. Every time I try to state why I love makeup and fashion, she shuts me down with big words and statistics. She's really good at winning arguments. It's hard living in a house where we have to outsmart the smartest woman on earth. I really just like the pictures. I can't wait to go through this issue. I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Joanne returns to her reading and I try my best to concentrate on the fashion candy before me. I hear Bethel's cackle. He needs to pay. I'm not over until I say it is. Christian, the pool manager, interrupts my scheming. Everyone, we have a special treat today. The city's only Black-owned synchronized swimming team is here to give a short demonstration. Synchronized, synchronized swimming? I say loudly. What's that? Just you wait, Christian says. The pool goers are reluctant to get out of the deep end, but they eventually do. 
a group of six swimmers wearing matching electric blue swimsuits march across the deck like soldiers. The swimmers are all different shapes and sizes. They look older, like high schoolers, but there's only one who looks about my age. Christian gives a big thumbs up and music starts to play. It's Beyonce's Break My Soul. Then the swimmers do the wildest thing. They jump into the water and start to dance. Actually dance. Hands up in the air, wrists snapping. One swimmer lifts another by the waist. The swimmer who is lifted waves to the crowd like no big deal. There are more twirls and leg lifts and all kinds of cool movements timed to the song. I can't believe it. The crowd claps and sings along. The swimmers all go underwater and kick their legs straight up at the same time. Heads turn to the left, then to the right. The music reaches its climax, the swimmers dive deep into the water, there's no sign of them. It seems like we are all holding our water in our breath in anticipation. I know I am. Then she pops, a soul swimmer, standing on the shoulders of another. She's the one who looks my age, and here she is being lifted up high. As if that's not amazing enough, she smiles before doing a flip in the air, a flip. I'm all, in all my 12 years of life, I've never seen anything like this, ever. Wow, I say. Wow, Joanne says. The swimmers pull themselves out of the pool and then stick their hands up at the same time and wave. One of them addresses the crowd. Hi, my name is Yvette and I am part of the LA Mermaids, an artistic swimming team, but you might know the sport as synchronized swimming. If you've ever wanted to learn how to dance in the water, we will be holding our first general meeting next week. You don't need experience. You just need to have basic swimming skills. There will be flyers up at the bulletin board with the number to call if you have any questions. I hope to see you there. Synchronized swimming team? How cool is that? That was amazing, I say. Yeah, Joanne says. It probably costs lots of money. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I'm here to be the center of attention. To be strong and beautiful and graceful. To be lifted up to the sky. You probably have to be so fit to do things they did. Imagine dancing in the water. Before I head home, I make sure to grab a flyer. And that's just chapter one of Barely Floating. If that chapter catched your attention, make sure to check it out next time you're at the Alameda Free Library. Thanks for joining us and see you guys again on the next week.